This is the version of the equation that we saw in the previous slide right here. And what we're going to do is simplify this to a one-dimensional form, which is the form that you often see in textbooks. Uh, so the first step is to uh, recognize that del dot del c will give us a second derivative uh, if we're just going in uh, one direction or if we're going in two directions this will this will be uh, well we also keep the y coordinate here um, so when we when we do del dot uh, gradient of c then we get the second derivative of c in the x direction and the second derivative of c in the y direction so what I've done is to take the uh, the nd it stays and then for the mechanical dispersion I expanded that out and I'm using uh, just the flux times the longitudinal dispersivity uh, in the x direction and flux in the x direction times the transverse dispersivity and the second derivative of C uh, in the y direction. Okay, so this stuff here goes and gives, you, gives me this in the y direction and this one in the x direction. Okay, and so then what we got is, let's see, here's the, here's the parentheses, right? It goes to there. So this term here is uh, del dot, the divergence of that stuff. So in 1D, that becomes this term right here. It's the, uh, the flux in the x direction, so that is the gradient of the flux, or that's the, the flux vector. And so in 1D, we get just the flux in the x direction, and we get then the gradient of the concentration in the x direction. And then this term, this is unchanged. Okay, so that's what we do to go to this, uh, this second line. And then we divide through by n. And if you assume that the porosity is uniform and it doesn't change, then we can just divide through by n, and it's there and there. And so we divide through, and it shows up here in the denominator. And it will show up here and here. So the thing that we then have to remember is that that term there, flux divided by porosity, is equal to the average velocity uh, of the, the water in the porous medium. Okay, so we divide through by the porosity, and uh, we we get rid of the porosity here in the d. Uh, we that dividing through by porosity turns the flux into the velocity there and there, um, well no sorry not there, there and there, um, and that, oh, actually no, that, I, I'm sorry, uh, all three of these velocities are there because we have a flux we divide through by porosity, and then we have a porosity here in the original equation that divides out. Okay, so this whole line here is just dividing through by uh, the porosity. And then for the next step, what we can do is take a look at these terms. Uh, they're um, similar to the extent that, well, they differ in that they have different uh, dispersivities. So if we say that the longitudinal and transverse dispersivities are equal, then we can just write uh, the uh, total hydrodynamic dispersion as D, and we have an expression that looks like this uh, as the simple form of the advection dispersion equation in 1D. All right, now I'm going to show you how to change the form of this equation around slightly so it's in the dimensionless form. On the previous slide, we saw this was the simplified version of the governing equation in, in 1D. Um, well, I guess we have dispersion in, in 2D. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, is basically just multiply both sides 
by um, by that L squared over D C zero and if I do that, then I get this uh, this grouping here. Uh, here's the L squared over C0. The Ds cancel out. And here's L squared C0 over D. Um, multiplied, applying that term. And here it is. Okay. So the reason why I've done this is because uh, this grouping now of, uh, of parameters uh, has units that cancel out. And that allows me then to have a, an expression, uh, have a governing equation that is uh, that, that's dimensionless. And uh, this is, let's see, um, let me show you how that works. So this is going to stay pretty much the same down here. But what I'm going to say is that my dimensionless uh, concentration is my actual concentration divided by this uh, C0. And that see that zero there that that's really that should be the same as that okay so C prime is just the concentration scaled to this reference concentration and X prime is just X scaled to L and T prime is T times D divided by L squared so remember D has uh, units of L squared over t. So uh, this uh, t prime has units of uh, t l squared over t uh, divided by l squared. That's this right here. So the units cancel and so this thing here t prime that's what we'll call the dimensionless time it's the actual time scaled to these variables uh, to make it dimensionless. This is the dimensionless coordinate, um, x coordinate, and the dimensionless concentration. So if I take this version of it here, uh, I, if I think of this as x squared divided by l squared, then that's, I can, I can say, well, I'm not going to show that l squared is going to be in here, and, and it essentially is x prime same thing for y prime and c prime is just c over c zero so this becomes that and uh, the c zero and one of these l's is used to make this dimensionless c prime x prime so this is that and there's t d c zero l squared um, well, let's see, T, D, L squared, that makes this T prime, and the C0 makes that C prime. So there we have that. Okay, um, and then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to take that grouping, and that's dimensionless, and uh, this is dimensionless here. And I'm going to call that uh, R prime and I'm going to call that PE. So there's PE. So this is a dimensionless number called the Peckley number and this is a dimensionless number called the the Damkolder number. And in in the future notes I call this uh, D A. There'll be more on that next week when we talk about uh, reactions in, in more detail. But what I want to focus on here is this Peckley number. Because let's just say we have a situation where there, there are no reactions. So that's zero. Then here's really the beauty of doing all this algebra. If we have this form of the equation, this is still the, this is still the governing equation. We've just multiplied through by these terms. We multiply both sides, so it all, all comes out the same. But what we get then is that the parameters are really just this thing here, this Peckley number. If we go and look at our original equation here, um, we have the, well, I guess n, if we set that to 0, then that's a parameter, and uh, that's a parameter. And there's going to be some size to the problem also that's, that's not in here, but that's, 
that's implied. And so what we get then by doing this uh, non-dimensionalization is we reduce it from a, a, at the very least two overt uh, parameters to one, this guy, this, this Peckley number. Okay, and so what that means is that uh, that, that's kind of showing us this intrinsic relationship between these variables that has, a, has an important governing property for these kinds of advection and dispersion problems.